1914. Psalms 1914. Amen. Yeah, yeah. 
I mean, the, the, the more and more you read of God's Word and you find out more about yourself, because it is like looking into a mirror, as the Bible says, looking into the perfect law of liberty, as a mirror, seeing ourselves as who we are, but also seeing how God has changed us, amen, and how God has continued to mold us and to make us in our lives uh, we are different than what we used to be. As I preached this morning that when a person comes to Christ, they're born again. They're a new creature in Christ Jesus. doesn't mean that uh, they're perfect as far as everything in their life, but it means that they have started their journey with the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, to grow in His grace and, and to follow Him as dear children. Uh, to desire the sincere milk of the Word that we may grow thereby and thus uh, uh, being stronger and stronger in the Lord uh, to where the to the point where then we can start handling the strong meat of the Word of God, which is also sweet uh, to our taste. But to grow more and more in the knowledge and all judgment is causing or should be causing our love also to abound, because we see. Uh, I think about Paul where he uh, started out saying that he was the least of the apostles. And then more and more and more down the line, then he says he was the least of all saints. And then more and more and more and more down the line to the last point, he says, I'm the chiefest of all sinners. <laughs> uh, it is true, the closer you get to the Lord, the more you're going to see that, man, you don't uh, deserve anything. Uh, that you've been given of the Lord, but by His grace, amen, we are what we are. Yeah, yeah. By His grace, we're able to stand, and therefore it causes our love for Him to grow. Just as the old Gaither song, the more that I serve Him, the uh, or the more, <laughs> the longer I serve Him, the sweeter He grows. And the more that we love Him, the more love He bestows back. And that is so true that the longer we serve Him, the, the stronger we get in the Word of God, the more that we see His love for us, and the more that we love Him because of all the things that He does for us on a daily basis. So what that tells me is that we need to grow in our knowledge. Amen? We need to grow in our knowledge and, and, and in faith uh, of the Scriptures. Stepping out more each day uh, upon the faith that we have in the Word of God. Seeing God work in our life and knowing that what He has promised, He will keep. Yeah. Look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 3. First Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 11 through 13, says, Now God Himself and our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ direct our way unto you, and the Lord make you to increase and, and abound in love one toward another and toward all men, at even as we do toward you. To the end... That or he may establish or establish your hearts unblameable in holiness before God, even our Father, at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints. Yeah. You see, the more that we get closer to the Lord and realize that uh, it's less about us uh, and our wants and our will and giving up of ourselves and, and uh, doing as what the Bible says in Romans chapter 12, and that's presenting our bodies a living sacrifice unto the Lord. The more that we do that, it's just as John the Baptist said, I must decrease and he must increase. Uh, people who are self-absorbed, they don't care about anybody else. Uh, me and Angela was talking about that this morning. You see it all the time. People just do things without any regard to anyone else around them. Uh, and they don't care if they, uh, uh, you know, have to uh, put someone else out as long as they get what they want. And that's the day and time we live in, and it gets 
worse and worse that more and more people are self-absorbed. But we're not to be self-absorbed. We're supposed to be uh, uh, Christ-absorbed. Amen? Uh, we're to have Christ living in us. And if we have Christ living in, in us, then we're going to understand it's a lot less about ourselves and more about the Lord, more about others. And that's what he says, And the Lord make you to increase and abound in love one toward another. That means the closer you get to the Lord, the more He's going to cause your love to abound one toward another and toward all men. The closer you get to the Lord, the more He is going to shine through your life. And it's going to be evident that you are walking with the Lord. Amen? When you walk with the Lord, people are going to see His characteristics coming out in your life where your characteristics are taking a back seat. Amen? And should be. So the knowledge that we have in the Word of God, that is part of, uh, that growing there is part of our relationship with our Heavenly Father. And the more relationship that we have with Him and relying upon Him to teach us, the more and more our love is going to grow. How? Just what we read here. And the Lord make you to increase and abound in love. Look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, the next chapter over, in verses 1 through 10. He says, Furthermore, then we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus, that as ye have received of us how ye ought to walk and to please God, so ye would abound more and more. So that comes down to the knowledge of the Scriptures, doesn't it? That we understand more and more how we ought to please God and abound more and more. For ye know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus. In other words, not being hearers of the Word only, but doers of the Word. Amen? You might not know it all. Okay? And none of us do. And really... Uh, we do ourselves a, a service by admitting when we don't know and what we don't know. And therefore, we open ourselves in sincerity, sincerity to God saying, I don't know. Lord, I need you to teach me. Yeah. And then when we know the commandments, when we know what God says, then we are to apply that in our life. Verse 3, it says, For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that ye should abstain from fornication. Uh, that's pretty evident, amen? That God has called us out uh, of the world to be separate unto Him. Mm -hmm. Not to live like the world and to think like the world, uh, but to be renewed and transformed by the renewing of His Word in us. That every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. Not in the lust of concupiscence, even as the Gentiles which know not God. That no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any matter. Because that the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we also have forewarned you and testified. For God hath not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness. He therefore that despiseth, despiseth not man, but God, who hath also given unto us His Holy Spirit. But as touching brotherly love, ye need not that I write unto you, for ye yourselves are taught of God to love one another. Amen. Who are you taught of to love one another? Of God. Amen. If you... <laughs> If you're sincerely getting closer to the Lord and, and wanting to keep His ways and to please Him, then He is going to automatically teach you love. Amen? Yeah. He's going to show you the love that you need to have in your life for one another. And indeed, verse 10, ye do it toward all the brethren which are in all Macedonia. But we seek, beseech you, brethren, that ye increase more and more. 
You see, we our job is never done, is it? Uh, we have a duty to the Lord from the time we accept Him as our Savior to the time He calls us home, and that is to serve Him with all that we have. Uh, to give our lives to Him. And He says in verse 11, And that He studied to be quiet, and to do your own business, and to work with your own hands, as we commanded you. That He... Uh, that He may walk honestly toward them that are without, and that He may have lack of nothing. So we are to serve the Lord, to draw closer to Him, and then He is going to put the love in us that we need for one another and for all men, as the Bible says. So, again, how is our love going to abound yet more and more? Just as He said, in knowledge and in all judgment. Look at Philemon chapter 1. Of course, there's only one, so it shouldn't be hard to miss that. <laughs> or to find it, rather. Philemon chapter 1 and verses 4 through 7. He says, I thank my God making mention of, of thee always in my prayers, hearing of thy love and faith which thou hast toward the Lord Jesus and toward all saints. Excuse me. That the communication of thy faith may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. For we have great joy and consolation in thy love because the vows of the saints are refreshed by thee, brother. Amen. You see, this is how we are to be. The communication of our faith becoming effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in us in Christ Jesus. And by acknowledging everything that is good in us, you're acknowledging that everything that is good in you comes from Jesus Christ. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because without Him living within us, there is nothing good in this flesh whatsoever. But with Christ living within us, He is what's good in us. And therefore, He is the one that we want to emulate in our lives. And as we do, not only uh, does it cause us great joy and consolation to live for the Lord and for our love to grow, but the love that we show because of our relationship with Jesus Christ gives great joy and consolation to others. And that's what we're here for. Amen? We're here to be an example of one to another. We're here to be a help. We're here to exhort one another and edify one another and love one another in the truth. Amen. And so, we cannot hope to be sincere in Christ if we are not increasing in knowledge and in judgment. Amen. If we are satisfied with what we know, and that's just good enough for us, then our sincerity has left our hearts. And we're just going through the motions, and it doesn't mean anything. Our love is going to decrease and decrease to the point where even if we do show love, it's forced and it's not true. Because you must continue in the knowledge of Jesus Christ and of wisdom in the Word of God, for God to increase His love in your life that flows from you to others around you. And if you are increasing in your knowledge in the Word of God, then you are sincere in wanting to please God in all things. Uh, there's a saying or a statement that says, Wisdom 
is not thinking you know everything without question. Wisdom is questioning everything you think you know. <laughs> and that's the truth. Because if you're just going by a, a, a set of rules in your mind without ever questioning those things and seeking those things from God in your life, well then you're just going through the motions. Which most people are. If you just listen to what someone says without ever going to the source and finding it for yourself, amen, from God Himself, then you are not sincere in your heart and you think you know everything without question. When you should be questioning what you think you know. Which is what the Bible says, amen? Amen. If any man think he knows anything, he knows nothing as he ought to know. Because we need to continue searching the Scriptures. And as Brother TJ said this morning, letting the, the Scripture interpret Scripture. Yeah, Why? That ye may approve things that are excellent. Amen. <laughs> How do you approve things that are excellent? By searching them out. Amen. The Bible says, taste and see that the Lord is good. You had to approve that yourself. Amen. You couldn't just take it off of someone else. And if you did, you weren't really experiencing anything, were you? But to experience the excellence of Jesus Christ, you had to place your faith in Him and then you saw how good Jesus really is. Amen. And so that we may approve things that are excellent is putting those things in the Scriptures that we know to be true and we believe in into practice in our life, stepping out on faith, and then we're going to see how excellent is Thy Word, O Lord. Amen. How excellent is Thy Word. Then we're going to have to see when the Bible says that His Word is sweeter uh, to our taste than honey and the honeycomb. We're going to see how true that is because we have applied it in our lives and we have approved that it is excellent. Amen. Amen. Get excited tonight. Amen. I'm excited because you can see God work through His Word when you put it into practice in your life and you see God, how much God cares for you and how much God loves you and how much God wants to work in your life to make you like His Son, Jesus Christ. Psalm chapter 26. If you just want to know what the Bible says, but you don't want to put it into practice in your life so that you can approve things that are excellent, amen? That you can see firsthand what God says in His Word is true for you. Yeah. Not just true in general. Right. Okay? It's easy to believe that God's Word is His Word in general. It's easy to believe that God's Word is true in general, and some people believe that. Oh, it's, it's, it's you know, basically true. There are things that are exaggerated here and there. No, no, it's true, amen, right down to the personal experience that you can put it in practice in your life and see that it is true. No one can tell me that His Word is a lie because I've approved it as excellent in my life. Amen. And if you're not doing that in your life, then you are not sincere in Christ. Psalm 26 and verse 1 through 3, he says, Judge me, O Lord, for I have walked in mine integrity. I have trusted also in the Lord, therefore I shall not slide. Examine me, O Lord, and prove me. Try my reins and my heart. For thy loving kindness is before mine eyes, and I have walked in thy truth. Amen. You see, the reason people won't approve things that are excellent is because they don't want to be examined by the Lord. 
Just as Brother TJ preaches that song about the house. Amen. Our heart is like a house. And we want Jesus to come in, but there's some rooms we don't want Him visiting. People really don't want to be examined by the Lord, and therefore they don't put into practice what His Word says because they're afraid of what the Lord is going to do in their life. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, there might be some people who are afraid of God's calling on their life, and therefore they just are sitting in a rut, watching things happen and not having any sort of uh, uh, application in their life, because they're afraid if they get real with God, God's going to get real with them. Yeah. He might just call them to preach. Or He might just call them to be a missionary in Peru or wherever. And Lord, we don't want that. So I'm just going to sit here and do nothing and act like I got it all figured out. No, the psalmist said, Judge me, O Lord, for I have walked in mine integrity. Lord, I seek to do Your will. I have trusted also in the Lord, therefore I shall not fly. I have trusted in You, Lord. Examine me and prove me. Try my reins in my heart. If we want to get real with God, we're going to open ourselves up to Him and say, Lord, examine me. Amen. Lord, look into me and show me my faults and my failures so that, Lord, I can get them right with You. And be closer to you. Yeah. That I may approve things that are excellent. You see, I think people are afraid of living a life of faith to the fullest. Because of what that means. You see, people are afraid of stepping out. Right? They don't want to leave the comfort zone that they built around themselves. In things and, and, and whatever. But I'm going to tell you what, God wants you to come and follow Him. Amen. Amen. To take up thy cross and follow Him. That means you're going to have to step out on faith. Not knowing what the outcome is going to be. Amen. People only want to serve the Lord when they can know the outcome. Right? right? Yes. They want to plan it all out. No, Jesus said just come. Amen. And follow me. Amen. I've got it figured out. You don't have to. You just have to trust in me. Amen. And if you'll just trust in Him, then He's going to lead you where you need to be. Amen. And I'm going to tell you, as scary as that thought is, when you get there and start living that in your life, you will be so excited that you're going to be on fire for the Lord. Amen. Amen. That sincerity in your heart's going to be burning bright. Because God is really doing the work in you. We have too many dead asleep Christians today yes. that aren't living by faith and therefore don't have the excitement of the Word of God in their life. They can't see God doing anything around them. All they can see is the failures and things and the complaints and all these things because they're truly not sold out to Christ. Yeah. To approve things that are excellent. To take His Word and put it into practice in their life no matter what the result. And saying, Lord, I'm leaving the result up to you in your hands. True. Look at Lamentation chapter 3. Lamentations is after Jeremiah. Jeremiah Lamentations. Chapter 3, verse 37 through 41. He says here, Who is he that saith, and it cometh to pass, when the Lord commandeth it not? Let me read that again. Who is he that saith, and it cometh to pass, when the Lord commandeth it not. Now we're going to read a little bit further. But I want to stop right there for a minute. You think about Jonah, right? Jonah told, told or God told Jonah that he, he needed to go to Nineveh and preach to the Ninevites. And 
Boy, Jonah didn't want to do that. And guess what he did? He went the opposite direction <laughs> in a boat. And boy, God sent a storm. And they are the people in the boat. They had a come to Jesus moment. Amen. <laughs> they were seeking God. <laughs> and they came to Jonah and he said, you know what? It's my fault. Yeah. I'm running from the Lord. Cast me over. Right? And so they cast him over and the storm start, stopped and they began to give praise to the Lord. And God sent a big fish to swallow Jonah. We know the story. The reluctant prophet. But you know what? <laughs> you can fight it all you want to. You can fight and fight and fight. Just as Jesus said to Saul, it's hard to kick against the pricks. Amen? You know what? You're going to do more hurt to yourself fighting the call of God in your life than you're doing good. Yeah. Verse 38 says, Out of the mouth of the Most High proceedeth not evil and good. Wherefore doth a living man complain? A man for the punishment of his sins. We have nothing to complain about. Yeah. Amen. If God judges us, we deserve it. Yeah. And verse 40 says, Let us search and try our ways and turn again to the Lord. Yeah. If approving things that are excellent isn't searching and trying our ways and turning to the Lord, I don't know what is. God wants all of us to question ourselves, not to question Him. Amen? Amen? But what we find ourselves doing is questioning Him and justifying ourselves. Whether we do it out loud or whether we do it by our actions, that's how we do it. But we need to have a desire to approve things that are excellent in our life. Amen? Yeah. To put God to the test. Amen? That's what that word approve means. To test. Well, the Lord says this. I'm just going to believe it. And I'm going to try it. I'm going to test it out. Try and see. See if the Lord's not good. Amen. Taste and see. Amen. You can't taste and see until you try it. Amen. Right. Test it. And then when you try it and test it, you're going to see, wow, this Amen. is great. Amen. Amen. Because I promise you this, you will never regret stepping out on faith. Right. Right. Never. Never. You will regret not stepping out of faith. Yeah. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 11. First Corinthians chapter 11 verse 27 through 32. 20, starting in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 it says... Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Now there's a truth, right? <laughs> when we're chastened of the Lord, it's not because He hates us. It's because He's trying to get us back in line where we should be so that we're not a part of the con con uh, condemnation of the world. And I'm going to tell you what, there's a judgment coming to this world that you don't want to be a part of. Yeah. Right. Amen? Yeah. Woo. Yeah. Listen, 
You say, well, this is talking about the Lord's Supper. Well, you know what? I believe that the Lord's Supper is more than just unleavened bread and grape juice. Because the Bible says, give us this day our daily bread. And this is the bread. You know what that bread was? The flesh that He broke for us. And that wine was the blood that He spilled for us. And you know who He is? The living Word of God. When we come here today, we break bread. Amen. And if you break bread unworthily, you're <laughs> looking for judgment. Amen? You say, what does that mean? That means you come here without any intent of examining yourself and getting right with the Lord and seeking His will for you in your life. You are in vain here today. Right. Because you are not discerning the Lord's body which is us. Amen? And if we're going to live for the Lord, then we have to be sincere in our heart, looking for God to examine us every time we step through this door. Not just coming just to come. Right? Not just being here because, oh, well, you know, maybe I'll enjoy the music. No, we need to come here examining ourselves. Amen? And saying, Lord, search me. Try me. Lord, I want to be closer to you. Lord, show me what you want from me. Every time. Not just once a year. Not just once a month. Every time we meet here together, Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night, we need to be looking for the will of God in our lives. Because if we are not, then we are here in vain. And we're going to be judged if we do not judge ourselves. And we're going to fall into that chastisement of the Lord. Listen, we need to approve things that are excellent in our life. Which is Jesus. Amen. Amen. Which is Jesus. His Word is excellent. It is pure. It's been tried. Amen. And it is everything that we need. So as we grow in our knowledge, and not just in knowledge and judgment, but in approving things that are excellent, putting what we see and know in the Word of God into practice in our life, Then the Bible says that ye may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ. You see, if that's the way you're living, then you truly are sincere in your heart to the Lord. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Second Corinthians chapter 1. Verse 8 through 12, he says, For we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure, above strength, in so much that we despaired even of life. But we had the sentence of death in ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God which raiseth the dead. Yeah who delivered us from so great a death and doth deliver, in whom we trust that He will yet deliver us. (laughs) Boy, that's some confidence. Amen. Ye also helping together by prayer for us that for the gift bestowed upon us by the means of many persons' thanks may be given by many on our behalf. For our rejoicing is this, the testimony of our conscience. If I ask you what the testimony of your conscience is, just think about that. The testimony of our conscience. Is your conscience clear before God in sincerity? Have you truly been selling out all you can for the Lord? 
in the sincerity of your heart. He says, For our rejoicing is this, that the testimony of our conscience, that in simplicity and godly sincerity, not with fleshly wisdom, but by the grace of God, we have had our conversation in the world, our way of life, and more abundantly to you. Yeah. Oh man, what a rejoicing that is to have your conversation in the world in sincerity and truth. Yeah. Not in fleshly wisdom, but by the grace of God. Amen. By the grace of God. Yeah. Look at Ephesians chapter 4. And Paul said many times, I desire this on your behalf. Amen. Listen, if you're not living a life close to the Lord in sincerity and, put, and living on faith, you don't know what you're missing. Amen. I want this for your behalf. Yeah. Because I know how exciting it is to see Amen. God walking up and down your life. Amen. Amen. And I want you to experience it too because it's going to draw you to that close relationship with the Lord that He can start using you. Amen. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11 through 16 He says, And He gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. You see, that's what we're here for, to be edified, right? Yeah. Till we all come in the unity of the faith. Yeah. We need that exhortation. We need that word of exhortation. Amen? Yeah. And if we all come here seeking to examine ourselves so that God can work in our life, then guess what? We're going to receive what God wants. And we're going to be coming in the unity of the faith. And of the knowledge of the Son of God. Unto a perfect man. And that man is Jesus Christ. Amen. Unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Amen. Woo! That we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro. And carried about with every wind of doctrine. By the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into Him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. Yeah, From whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplies. You see, this is what God wants that we may be sincere and without offense to the day of Christ, every joint supplying, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, making or maketh increase of the body unto, its, unto the edifying of itself in love. Amen. You see, this is what God wants us to do. To grow up into Him in all things. And to be a useful part of the body of Jesus Christ. Amen. But you know what? No one can live it for you. You have to live it yourself. Amen. You have to approve it yourself. You have to walk it yourself. You have to give yourself wholly to the Lord. Look at Ephesians chapter 6. And stand with me as we read. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 23 and 24 says, be, Peace be to the brethren, and love with faith, from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be with all them that love our Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity. Amen. Amen. Grace be with all them that love our Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity. Amen.
Lord, we thank you tonight for your love and mercy. Lord, we love you and thank you for all that you give to us, even though we don't deserve it. Lord, we just pray that each one of us would truly seek to follow you and to love you in the sincerity of our hearts. Lord, not in man's wisdom, but Lord, to seek the knowledge and wisdom of your word and then to approve those things that are excellent by putting your word into practice in our lives and submitting ourselves to your will. And Lord, we thank you that we have all that we need in Jesus Christ, that he fulfills all in all. Lord, forgive us where we fail you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated as we sing. The altar is open for those who want to pray. Page 215. 215, we'll sing all three verses. Heaven came down, the Lord filled my soul. 215.
Father in heaven, Father, we thank you for this day and we thank you for all the blessings that you've given us. Be with us as we ready for this we take up this offering and spirit to your ministry. Be with all the missionaries that we support and protect them as they preach the gospel in whatever land that they are in and whatever governments that they face. Be with them as they preach the gospel and lead people to you and to start a church. Give them the strength and the knowledge to know that you're with them. Forgive us of our sins in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 <coughs>
Well, it's been a it's been a pretty rough week, and I try not to worry, but I think we all do. But um, my faith is not wavering. I just get worried about tomorrow sometimes when I'm not supposed to. Yeah. I still do. Okay. Truth is I'm tired, options are few, I'm trying to pray, but where are you? Truth is I'm weak, no strength to fight, no tears to cry, even if